Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning in Windsor United Church. A special welcome for our first timer, Patricia. Thank you. And also anyone joining us on YouTube. Today we remember and celebrate the work of Blue Care for over 70 years. We celebrate the many people who have served in God's mission of compassionate care and love. For those not aware, there are many agencies of the United Church, Blue Care, Age Care Services, four under United Care Queensland. Well, welcome back, Eunice. We give thanks for the vision and courage of the founders throughout Queensland and those who strive to make a difference in the lives of people in the community and the wider world. So we are invited to continue this legacy as we respond to the needs of others with compassionate care. For those who just arrived today, we join with many churches in Queensland, the United Churches in Queensland, as we celebrate um, Blue Care Sunday. We begin our worship by lighting the Christ candle. Great will light it for us this morning. We light the Christ candle as we remember that Jesus, the light of the world, shines in our midst today and always, bringing light, warmth, and hope to all. So let's come to God with our call to worship. The words are on the screen. Please join me in the part in bold form. We gather to worship God, who looks at all people with love. Just a second. Our clicker is going a bit slow. Let's start again. We come to God with our call to worship. We gather to worship the God who looks at all people with love, justice, and compassion. With God's hospitality, we become the receivers of God's love, that we may be givers of God's love. We do this, not as strangers, but as a reconciled community. We retell the story of Jesus, that we may find our lives in Jesus. In grateful thanks for God's faithfulness, we are called to do what is just, to show mercy and kindness, and to serve the most vulnerable in our community. Open our eyes, Lord, to see your vision for a better world, and to be respond to the needs of the community in which we live and the wider world. Give us the courage to respond to these needs, bearing witness to your abundant love and compassion. Let us worship. Yes. Let us worship God in this uh, beautiful tune called Gather Us In. As we sing our first hymn together, the words are on the screen. Let's stand and sing as you are able. It's hymn number 474. Here in this place, new life is streaming.
with uh, prayers of thanksgiving and confession. Let us pray. Generous God, giver of all good things, with humility and thanks, we reckon we recognize all we have comes from you. You are the one who sees us and provides for our needs. We give thanks for the many people who have gone before us as witnesses to your great love through serving those in need. We give thanks for the many people in the past and present who have served across blue nursing services and then across blue care joining in your mission of compassionate care and loving service of the most disadvantaged and vulnerable in our community. Loving God, forgive us when we miss the mark of your heart for our family, our friends, our neighbors, strangers and enemies. Forgive us for neglecting the poor the marginalized, and those who we define as differing from us. We come to you also for anything that comes to our mind now, but we need to ask for your forgiveness. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, God hears and sees our regrets, our brokenness, and our heart. Hear then God's word of praise to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thank you. Let us continue our worship by giving thanks to God and singing together number 738, My Jesus, My Savior. Let's stand and sing as you are able.
share a sign of peace with one another with normal contact and intercultural culture of gestures. Uh, for the benefit of uh, Patricia, it is this is the third Sunday of Queensland Multicultural Week. You might be able to teach us something. How do you say peace in Spanish or how do you any gestures that we use? Or we learn, we wave because of COVID. <laughs> and shalom in one hand, like our Middle Eastern brothers and sisters. Peace with two fingers. And the other one, how was it? <laughs> I, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> learn new things every day. And prayer hands like the Southeast Asians. If anyone knows of anything else, please teach me too. So I think we have enough drilling on this. So let's go take a peek. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. 
yeah, just to follow Paul Louise and just yeah, encourage everyone next Sunday to come along to the paint and sip, bring your paintbrushes. If you can bring the soup, let Louise know so we can you know, coordinate so not everyone's bringing the same soup on the day. Um, uh, yeah, just, uh, just yeah, we're big on building community here at Windsor and it'd be great to get everyone to come along. So, as Louisa says, um, today is Blue Care Sunday and um, yeah, for those not aware, Blue Care is the uh, agency of the United Church that does a great work in the aged care. Um, in the aged in, in age care. Um, and it's celebrating 70 years this week. Um, so just yeah, a brief history of uh, Blue Care. So the, it, it started off as the Blue Nursing Service in Queensland back in 1953 by the Reverend Arthur Preston, who was the Superintendent Minister of the West End Methodist Mission, now the West End United Church, um, who had been appointed by the Queensland Methodist Home Missions to head a committee to examine district nursing work that had been pioneered then in uh, New South Wales. Arthur Preston was convinced that there was a need for such a service in Brisbane, as there was a big shortage of hospital beds, and existing home nursing bodies were unable to cope with the demands of the growing population in Brisbane at the time. The West End Methodist Mission committed financial support of 30 pounds, which pounds back then, not dollars, and the, and the venture became a reality. Through the generous assistance given by the press, media, members of newly formed, and the members of the newly formed committee resulted in donations of money and offers of assistance. Olive Crombie was employed as the first registered nurse to work with this service. As, as I said, it was named the Blue Nursing Service after the blue uniforms chosen by the registered nurse. Blue was selected not only because it was more practical than white, because the colour is associated with acts of care and mercy, which was considered the emphasis of the service. Olive started her visits with a small medical skit kit of sterilisers, bowls, trays, forceps and scissors. Instruments were brought back to the centre and sterilised or were done in a saucepan in the stove on the patient's home. Her first case call was logged on August the 24th, on August the 24th, 1953, when Olive travelled by tram to tend to her patient. So was born the Blue, Blue Care. By the end of the first year, the Blue Nursing Service employed six full-time and two part-time sisters. In October 1954, the second centre started. This one was a Western Ipswich under the care of Olive McAllister. By the end of 1956, the vision of a statewide community nursing service was becoming a reality with the setting up of a number of regional centres. It also became apparent that a coordinating body was essential to provide guidance and direction, to negotiate with governments, to disperse funds provided by the state and Commonwealth governments. This led to the development of Blue Nursing Service Council in 1957, with Arthur Preston as the Director General. Blue Nursing Centres have sprung up all around the state by the end of the decade. 1957, the Lower South Coast and Tweed, known as the Coolangatton Centre, in 1957 in Wynnum. Also in 1957, Sangate Redcliffe Centre opened. In 1958, a centre opened in Tentor, and in 1959, a centre opened in Warwick. Some of these centres opened up and were operated from people's homes. Today, Blue Care employs over 9,000 people. It has 47 residential aged care facilities around the state, and over 60,000 community clients. Today, we give thanks for the 70 years of Blue Care, and for the faithful service of those who have gone before us. May we all continue to grow this legacy as faithful stewards. First reading comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, 8 to 12, 29 to 40, followed by chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. 
Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the walls were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from, from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, and did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him for the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that, had, that has foundations, whose architect and builder was God. By faith, for Sarah's involvement, he received power of procreation, even though he was not too old, because he considered himself faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, this is as good as dead, descendants were born. As many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore, by faith the people passed from the, through the Red Sea as if it was dry land. But when Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drunk. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had, she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of the lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and were made strong in the weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to fight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sworn into. They were killed by the sword. They went out in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we were surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight in the sin that cling so closely, and let us run the perseverance of race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Second reading comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that, this, that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? 
and one was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick and or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of these least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, who are who are at rest apart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no, no clothing. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal, eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the living word. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Before we reflect on God's Word and the theme of 70 years of faithful service today, let us pray. Merciful Lord, we thank you for your living Word and faithfulness. As we explore your Word this morning, may there be more of you and less of me in what I say. Speak to us through your Holy Spirit, for we are listening. Help us to understand and to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> now, in the first century, Jesus' words offers a profound vision of the common good for society. A famous quote from Mahatma Gandhi springs to mind here. The true measure of any society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. This is what Jesus refers to, the least of these. To go a step further, Jesus is saying a religion is judged by its treatment of the most vulnerable. So what we do to the least of these will be a reflection of our understanding of God and our relationship with God. So this year's Blue Cat Sunday theme is 70 years of faithful service. Service is at the heart of what Uniting Care do at Blue Cat and of what Uniting Care do as a whole in Queensland. It is also at the heart of what it means to be human and the Christian vision for society. This is especially so for the least of these in society, the most vulnerable in our community. Jesus connects our experience of God and what it means to be truly human to our service of the least of these. This is captured in a profound statement by Jesus. As we heard earlier, for I was hungry and you gave me food. Verse 42, let's study. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and thirsty and a stranger or naked? or sick or in prison and did not take care of you. Then Jesus will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did, uh, did not do it to one of the least of this, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Very sharp contrast, and I think we all got it. I like the 
also this quote from Desmond Tutu. Says, I don't preach a social gospel. I preach the gospel. Period. The gospel of our Lord is concerned for the whole person. If you see in the yes, the artwork there. Then the people, when the people were hungry, Jesus didn't say, "Now is that political or social?" He said, "I feed you, because the good news to a hungry person is bread." So, in case you miss some part of the quote or can't see the words clearly on the screen, here's a bigger version with just the words. I don't preach. A social gospel. I preach the gospel. Period. This is what I am learning and I'm called to do. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is concerned for the whole person. When people were hungry, Jesus didn't say or question. Now is that political or social? He said, "I feed you." Take it to your heart when you listen the second time now. Because the good news to a hungry person is bread. Don't say send it to blue care, send the person to just to the church. No, it's the good news that's through all of us. So Jesus' teachings offer a profound vision of the common good for society and a benchmark. For our moral and social value, our religion is judged by its treatment of the most vulnerable. Hope you agree that what we do to the least of these will be a reflection of our understanding of the gospel of God and our relationship with God. This vision of the common good was the basis. For the origins of the blue nursing service, as you heard from Craig earlier, and you can find this information if you want to read more on the um, United Care website. It began with Reverend Arthur Preston, who called the vision of God, and with the Western Mission. So they together were convinced that there was a need for such a service in Brisbane. As there was a shortage of hospital beds, and existing home nursing bodies were unable to cope with the demands, the needs of a growing population, so they took action. They just saw the need and they pray about it, and hopefully somebody do it. No, they took action. The Western Methodist Mission took the small step. Pay attention. They start small. The small step of committing financial support of thirty pounds sterling. How much is it in Aussie dollars again? Sixty. Sixty. <laughs> and the and the venture became a reality. And Olive Bombay was employed as the first registered nurse to work with this service. And now I, being in the hospital chaplaincy space, I got to meet so many. Wonderful colleagues in Blue Care, Blue Care chaplains. So the gospel and the care is coming together. The chaplains still upholding the gospel even through service. So that's one way we can see. And generous、uh, back to the story, not just with the uh, West uh, Western Mission that started it, and then the nurses doing their job. Generous assistance given by the press and media, and members of the newly formed committee resulted in donations of money and offers of assistance. So when the people got the same vision, I love this. I started a, a equation. It's not mathematic, but it's when vision is <coughs> got not just by the leaders, not just the committee, and the people. And then the passion and action coming together that become the movement. The blue nursing service became 
bring care and help, and even growing to have uniting care. So even uh, we also come back to this iconic color of blue. That remains so prominent in our blue, blue care today. Was based on this social vision. Blue was selected not only because it was more practical than white for all the nurses, but because the color is associated with acts of care and mercy. Care and mercy is a theme of their service, which was considered the, the emphasis of the service to the most vulnerable in our community. The predecessor of the Blue Nursing Service in New South Wales were known as the Blue Angels. Angels offering service, compassion, and acts of care to the most needy in society. There's a bit of history added to it. And we come back to the scripture. The reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and the first two verses of chapter 2. Of course, we remind us the importance of faith, and also faith in action. And it also reminds us that we are surrounded by a long history of faithful service. The history goes back thousands of years. As we look at the history of Blue Care over 70 years today, it is important to remember those who have gone before us and the faithfulness of the past. Last Friday, on the 18th of August, our nation apart from Ron celebrating 72 years of marriage to, to Erwin, 18 of August, our nation also acknowledged and remembered the Vietnam veterans for their contributions and sacrifices towards world peace, as we remember them 50 years after the end of our nation's involvement with Vietnam War. And on 31st August, our church the Windsor Uniting Church will be celebrating 136 years of faithful service, worship, and witness in our local community. All of this, together with the reading in Hebrew 11 and first two verses of Hebrews 12, show that remembering those who have gone before us and the faithfulness of the past not only remind us of our core mission, it also inspires us to follow in the footsteps of the cloud of witnesses of the past. When we are faithful in service of the least of this, we are joining the many people who have gone before us. We are also inspired to be committed to, the God, uh, to God's mission to be good role models to the future generations to come, which is part of the discipleship journey. We are all called to take. So we give thanks for 70 years of faithful service in Blue Nursing Service and Blue Care today. We also been reminded of our call and challenge to strengthen this history of service as we all play our part in the service of the least of these. And I encourage to continue to pray with me, with the church leadership, as we find the needs of our community. And just as the Wesley, um, um, West Ham Mission, and of course it's West Ham Mission as well, how to meet that needs and become a call of our mission. God bless you as you respond to God's call and joining in his mission. I now invite you to stand as you are able, as we join together in an affirmation of faith. The words will be on the screen. Please join me in the passing bow form. God, you call us to join in your mission for a better world. 
But before we do that, is there any prayers of thanksgiving or prayer needs? I do remember this. We prayed for the family that Morris mentioned. Loving, let us pray. Loving God, we pause to give thanks for 70 years of faithful service at close blue care. We are thankful that we are surrounded by such a faithful group of witnesses who have strived to serve the least of these in our society and contributed to a better world. Hear us as we offer prayers for the work of blue care, for the staff and volunteers, for the chaplains and pastoral and spiritual care volunteers, for those in leadership positions and make important decisions. We ask that you guide and bless the activities of Blue Care as it continues to be part of your mission in Queensland. We pray for those whose home is a Blue Care residential facility. We pray for those who have supported and cared for by Blue Care staff in their own homes. And for those whose lives are enriched by activities at Blue Care respite, respite centers. We also ask that they may experience compassionate care based on your love and that they will have the chance to get to know the good news and find faith in you and live their life to their fullness. In our local context, we ask that you will heal and strengthen those who are feeling weak not well, and those who need to build resilience as they face challenges of their physical, mental, and spiritual health. We also live up the family of one of the family that I always work with, which is for some God hearing family this week. Strengthen them and help them to process the outcome. Lord Jesus, lead us, inspire us, and guide us as we play our parts in your vision for our church, for our family, and for this world. Make it clear to us how we can join you in mission into this world that so desperate needs your love and the transforming power of the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Risen Christ, wherever we are, Grant us the faith and courage to recognize you in our midst. Listen, Christ, lead us deeper into resurrection life. In your holy life, in living and witnessing to your gospel. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let us also join together and pray confidently in the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Feel free to say it in the words of your heart language and God will understand. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from time and trouble, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> now let us stand as we sing our sending our hymn today. It's begun on my vision, the work of God's mission and His vision in our heart. Let's stand and sing as you are able. Be done on my vision.
May Christ Jesus his son, who died for you, mark your life with the good news. May the Holy Spirit dwell in within, fill you with healing and power, that we might see God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And may the blessing God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and always. Thank you.